Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the podcast and posse project me with Tiffany Carter. I'm your host, Tiffany, and I want you guys right now to tell me if this sounds like you. So you start your business, you might already be in your business, your early years, or you might want to have one. And you're like, okay, it's official. Like I have a name, I'm going to put video out there, posts out there, emails out there, I might even have an an actual office setting. And then you don't really get the clients you kind of fantasized you were going to get or the likes or the followers or the email downloads. And then you start backing way, way off because that doesn't feel good. Basically, you're seeking external validation for your own dreams and you're not getting that. And basically, it's telling you, well, then you're not meant to do this, girl. You're not meant to have this dream, to go after this business. Who in the hell do you think you are? Then you dim way down. And what do you think happens when we do that? Do you guys think that you actually end up making any sales, reaching those clients, inspiring any people? No, of course not. So I brought on today a very special guest. This is my first time actually having on one of my students. And she is one of my star clients, Courtney Baker. She's a marketing strategist and a business coach for coaches. Her background stems over 12 years in this industry long before it was a cool thing to do. She has worked behind the scenes of several of the industry's top and most well known coaches that are out there. So she knows really what goes on in the real world, you know, the kind of stuff I tell you guys versus all the Bali and butterflies and bobblehead bullshit. So welcome, Courtney. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So here's what I want to dish on and tell me what your take is on this. When you, cause you've coached so many people and you coach a lot of people who are newer into whatever it is they're doing, being a wellness professional, um, whether it is they want to be a life coach or a mindset coach or something like that. Why do you think it is that so many of these people seek this external validation if they should keep going or really go all in on their dreams? I think because it's it's so easy to compare yourself to these coaches, these influencers that have been doing this for a decade, and they're not really sharing that they've been in this for years and years. And there's a lot of coaches or influencers, leaders, whatever it is, that did get some overnight success. There is that to be, to be honest, but most of the people that you're seeing online and comparing yourself to have been working at building this online platform for years and years. And they started out with, you know, zero likes or a hundred followers. And it took them years to even get past that point to where they're actually monetizing it. And we're not actually seeing that. So it's easy to compare yourself to those people and think, I'm never going to make it. It worked for them. It's so easy for them. But you're not actually seeing the years that went into building what they have today. 
This is exactly the hole that I saw in the coaching market and why I said, fuck it, I'm jumping in because it really pissed me off when I was watching people. Like I always joke you guys about like making it seem so simple and easy and effortless and then just buy my program and you too can have a course that makes millions of dollars. It really pissed me off because of what you just said. All of the people who then are like you guys who are trying to go for it and you're not having this so-called instant success and everything you touch doesn't turn to gold. It makes you feel like shit about yourself. Absolutely. It? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Marketers are doing this really well. And especially if they're touting that they're going to help you build the thing that they've built themselves, they're going to use the words that are attractive and to get you in that headspace to start thinking that like, it could be that easy. And it's enticing to spend money and pay thousands and thousands of dollars to somebody who promises that, you know, you'll be making bank within you know, a month or a year even. And while there is that chance, majority of people, like it doesn't happen that way. But these marketers, myself included, are really good at telling you those things because it's easy to believe them. And you're someone of integrity. So I know that you don't share things that aren't true. It is important we show what's possible because that's inspiring, empowering, motivating. If I if I didn't watch people who showed me what's possible, I wouldn't have even bothered started starting project me cuz what mm -hmm. would have what would the point be? So it's important to share that, but to not share the flip side of behind the scenes and what it takes, that's what's not an in integrity. Why do you think it is that so many people like you guys have heard me say before, like toe dippers, they'll like, they'll do some of the things. But then if it if it stops feeling good, and so to speak, easy and glamorous and fun and in flow and alignment, <laughs> if it mm. stops feeling that way, then they stop and go, well, I guess it's not meant for me. I know you coach coaches, that's your specialty. So what do you say to your people? when they, I know they have to come to you and say that, like, it's not working, Courtney. Yeah. The, I love that you call it the toe dippers. Uh, and with so much respect to all of the toe dippers out there, it's hard to build that resilience to get used to everything sucking for a long time, actually. And when I'm saying all of this, I don't want it to come off like super negative that this is not a good thing to get into, to be an entrepreneur, because if you love it, like it, it's absolutely amazing. And there's so many benefits and it's really hard. Like it sucks for a long time. Um, and I think when you come into this, so many people have these expectations of entrepreneurship is so glamorous and there's so much flexibility and there is like, I can take a bubble bath at two o'clock in the afternoon. If I want to, I wear leggings and t-shirts all day. Like I don't really have to you know, I don't sit in commuter traffic. There's all of those benefits, but that's 1% of the rest of this, which is actually still a lot of work. You're still actually kind of working a job, so to speak. You're still doing the job, but you're also the boss, which is almost kind of harder because you, you're you having to make those expectations uh, and meet them yourself rather than blaming somebody else, a boss, a coworker, that kind of thing. So I think a lot of people when they're coming into the online space are expecting it to be fun and with so much freedom. And you don't actually have that freedom that entrepreneurship gives you for a while until you successfully set up a business. And when those expectations aren't met, when you haven't met your own, and it doesn't feel the way you thought it would, that's when people quit. That's when the toe dippers pull out completely. So are you saying the people who you've seen be successful over and over again, like some of the common traits that you see, would one of them be that even when it sucks, they keep going? Yep. That's the only way. I mean, I know it sounds so simple, right? And it it's simple, but it's hard. And if you just didn't quit and you didn't stop, you'd make it eventually. And I heard that from so many people as I was going through entrepreneurship, watching these leaders that were making multi six figures, seven figures and watching them. And they're saying like, if you just don't quit, time will give it to you anyway. Like you will meet it. It may not be as quick as you wanted, but you will hit it eventually. Just don't stop. And so I just stopped 
quitting because I quit a lot in the first 10 years, to be completely honest. And then the last two or three years, I stopped quitting. And that's when I got successful because I did it anyway, even when it sucked, even when I didn't want to. And I think a lot of people would like to think that, you know, I or you or so many of these successful people that you're looking up to and comparing yourself to didn't have the same obstacles that you have right now in your life, that it's harder for me, right? They don't have this going on. I have all of these obstacles. And yeah, your your situation might be specific to you if you're listening to this, but it doesn't mean that anybody else that's reached that level of success hasn't gone through ma- like major massive obstacles in their own life to get to where they're at. I mean, I wanted to quit. No joke for sure. In the first five years of my business, I said it at least once a week. And then there, but I also am someone who like, I love complaining. Let's be honest. Like you should hear me at the gym. Like it's a release for me. I don't really mean it. I mean, I mean it, but I don't mean it. What I mean by that is I'm, I'm not going to, I'm never going to quit. But it feels good to just get that out as a release. But I felt that every single week, at least at one point for five years. Now, part of that is my own fault because I thought I had to do it all alone. And that was like me thinking, you know, following, you know, my mom's footsteps as an entrepreneur and doing it alone means like, you know, you're a real entrepreneur if you do it alone. I made that up in my head. I mean, I have, that's not true at all. So I, did have employees. So I paid people, but I didn't have anyone supporting me emotionally. I had a Mm. therapist, but the therapist wasn't for business stuff. I had no one supporting me emotionally. And as you know, you're just saying, without that emotional support, during all those times where you want to quit, where it's hard, where it's like, you're not making money, and you're like, what am I doing wrong? Without that, I can see how people quit. Oh, heck. I mean, me, the version, the coach, the business owner, the entrepreneur that I was all these years ago um, was, for a lack of better words, a just complete hot mess. And I didn't think I was capable. And I, I was always performing or doing things in my business. Let's just see what happens. But waiting until I was going to be taken out. It was always like, well, maybe this will work. But like, this is the last time I'll try. And so I had already had that limiting belief on top of myself that like, I didn't actually think I was capable of doing the things. And so I'd try a little bit like the toe dipper kind of thing a little bit, and then I would back off or I'd sabotage it or, or whatever. And the only reason that I've, and I'm in my own opinion that I've had the success I've had in the last few years is because I've reached that level of emotional awareness to the point where I stopped sabotaging everything. And I actually believe that I'm capable of it. And the other thing that I want to add on to this is isn't it's not so much just saying like I can accomplish all things cuz I have those own I have those fears that I'm not but I know that I'll never give up on it that this business like I'll die doing this and I've got a lot of years left in me so if it takes me another 40 years to get it right like 40 years is a long time but I'm willing to go the distance before I see success in that and Even if I thought I wasn't capable right now, I'll still show up knowing that in 40 years I might be capable. And I don't know that that many people are willing to accept that this is a lifelong thing for them. It might be that short term, like fun thing on the side. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. I mean, is it is it a jobby to you or is it truly a business you want to build? When I say a jobby, that's my word for really expensive, time consuming, energy sucking hobby. So is it a jobby or is it something that is a true business that you really want to grow? And you know how you guys hear, and I know like Courtney, you've heard it a million times and like some of you are going to roll your eyes. Others of you are going to be like, I've never heard that before. But it's like, what's your why? Anything that's repeated over and over, I start getting annoyed by it, including my favorite songs. It's like, why did you ruin it for me? Um, (laughs) And it's like, what's your why? But I mean, the reality of that is you do need to have something bigger than cash. I do not have to have project me with Tiffany Carter. I have a seven figure business already, but my soul had to, that was not lighting me up anymore. 
I was so irritated with what I saw going on in this whole motivational speaker, um, online, you know, online coaching space, business coaching space. I was felt, I thought it was so irritating to me because the full picture was not being shared. Mm -hmm. And I had to do it for that reason. Like I show up for all of you. This show costs me a lot of money to run, but I show up anyway. I've done it when I'm sick. I've done it right after I had to record episodes right after my dog died, like the day after Molly died, you know, and I know you have that too, Courtney, where it's like, you know, I know there's times that you've shared, you know, you've been really sick and not in a good way, but you always showed up for your client calls, didn't you? That's always priority. Even if I couldn't make it on social media, I would, I would at least show up for my, my client calls and tell them. And I was honest with them. Like I've got you. I'm going to help you through this session. I am here for you and I'm completely capable of holding space for you. And I feel awful or I'm struggling emotionally with whatever's going on. And that also gave them so much power themselves to like, see that this is what it actually looks like behind the scenes too. Um, but I want to touch on something that you said about like, uh, it is so cheesy. Oh my God. But finding your why and having the reason for doing all of this and that you, I know you don't need to have this business and you don't need to coach and pour into the thousands of people that you do. But I know it comes from that place in your heart of service to do that. For me and my business for many years, I wasn't doing it because I had a why. Like my why was truly in all honesty, I didn't want to work in the doctor's office anymore that I worked in. <laughs> Like, I didn't want to do it. I, I hated it. And I was like, this is not a life that I wanted to live anymore. I wasn't willing to do it. Like, take that for what you want to read between the lines there. And so this business really was me getting out of survival to pay my bills so that I could have that freedom. But what happened for me is that I did make that money. And I did kind of, when I came back into the online space and decided, like, I'm really going to do it this time and, you know, get my ish together, I built it up fast and I did make a lot of money quickly and there was an event that I went to and I had about 15 of my clients there, which is a lot of people in person to see yeah. 15 of them. And, you know, they had the whole like backdrop thing where people take photos and all of that. And it was such a surreal moment for me to be the coach, to be the person people were kind of like ooing and eyeing over. And it's, I mean, it's such an awkward thing you guys just saying, but I had people lining up to take photos with me. I was that person. And I felt nothing, mm. nothing at all. And that's when I realized like, th this isn't right. Like something's wrong here. I'm supposed to be happy. I'm, sp I'm supposed to feel something. And I felt nothing. And I knew something was off. And automatically at the time, I was like, I got to make more money. <laughs> like, it's money. Clearly, <laughs> clearly it's a thing. Like I need to make a million dollars <laughs> in a year and go even more like bigger goals, more fulfillment, which obviously was not the case at all. And so that's when I really had to find the why for it. There had to be a bigger reason because even the money wasn't enough for me. It didn't do it for me anymore. It never really did to begin with. But once my needs were met, I realized like it's not actually about that at all. Why do you think it is that so many people end up quitting or just they back off enough from the very thing they're going after where you might as I mean, you might as well quit. It's a form of sabotage. You've you've turned the dial so far down your foot so far off the gas. Obviously, your business isn't going to gain any traction. That's a very large percentage of people, even people who I've coached, I've coached personally over 1500 people one on one, and thousands and thousands of thousands of people in group type settings. And I I'm telling you guys this it is I would say it's fair to say there's 90% of people end up down that path of you know, it's too hard, it's too much, then the self doubt comes in. And, and this must not be meant for me, because it's not happening like it is, you know, Polly, the influencer over here. And, you know, it, it shouldn't be this hard if I if it's meant to be, you know, if I'm meant to be doing this, if this is really my true purpose and soul calling, it shouldn't be this hard. I said that to myself also. But mm -hmm. I would say 90% of people end up getting mind fucked themselves into their own way and end up fizzling out. Would you say that's about what you've seen with all the people you've coached in 12 years? 
Absolutely. I mean, it it's meant to be, right? If you have that calling, if you have that fire in your belly to do something more, it's absolutely available to you, but you have to do the work to meet that. And the type of person that has the business and the life that you want isn't the person that you are right now. And you have to stretch out of who you are right now to meet that version of yourself, to have that kind of business, to be that kind of leader and do the things that you dream of doing because you're not that way yet. And I think so many people think that it would be easier than it is to be stretched, to reach that new version of themselves. And when they realize, oh, this is a hell of a lot harder, like that, I didn't know that this is what it looked like. And yes, this is what it looks like. And to be honest with you guys, like, again, I don't want to be super doom and gloom, but it's a lot of picking yourself up off of the bathroom floor after you had a meltdown in the shower, putting your big girl panties on and doing the damn thing day in and day out, there is relief and there are good times and you do have fulfillment, but it is a lot of that picking yourself back up again. I a thousand, thousand, thousand percent agree. Like I said, my first five years of business, I do not recommend anyone does what I, how I was operating. Now, how I went from employee to entrepreneur, that straddling method, that's something I teach today. That's rock solid. But me going at it alone with no mindset or emotional support, because I was embarrassed. And there wasn't mm -hmm. like this, there weren't people online to go to. I mean, it's like, what is Tony Robbins going to write me back? I mean, there was no one at that time to go to. And a therapist really isn't the right person when it comes to like, you know, building your business that that doesn't, that's not really what you talk about to a therapist. And I really was going at this all alone. I mean, I have honestly, I don't even know how I made it. But I'll tell you this, I kept hitting that same number. And Courtney, I don't know if I've told you this, but maybe you know this, because I mean, I we know why you came to me, you came to me for a multitude of reasons. You know, you guys know, I believe when the student is ready, the right teachers appear. Um, and I kept hitting $250,000 and I kept hitting it and I couldn't get past 250. Now, some of you listening are rolling your eyes like, oh, that must be fucking nice, girl. I'll take that right now. It's all relative. Maybe it's 60,000 for you. Maybe it's 5,000. But I kept hitting it. And here I had, you know, a lot of amazing sales training, marketing training. I had all sorts. Of, I had all the self-help books. I had a lot of stuff and I, and I couldn't get past that part. And I ended up hiring my longtime coach in the form of a 65 year old doctor who was coaching people like the people being coached back then were people like sitting in board seats of big companies, right? They weren't you and me. And within a year, I went from that 250 to hitting seven figures because I finally gave myself permission to have that support and do something different. And it's like you said, I was willing to be a different version of myself to go from six to seven figures and a very different version of me was required. Absolutely. I think, I think so many people, you know, and you've been this rock for me before I start crying, but it's, it's almost been a year that I've been working with you and I don't ever see that stopping. So you're stuck with me for a long time now. <laughs> um, I, I think as humans too, I'll, I'll own this. I have so much judgment at first with myself. And I know there's many times where I go to you and I'm like, is this normal? Do you do this too? Like I'm feeling this way. I'm having these thoughts. This is happening. And then you're like, yep, yeah, this is normal. You're right on track. Good job. And then I coach my own clients and they are having the exact same meltdown. And they're asking me, is this normal? Do you do this too? I'm the worst person ever. And I'm like, nope, you're doing great. Right on track. This is normal. And so on and so forth. And they're passing that down to their clients too. And I think the general message and the thing that I'm really seeing is that in society, the way that we've been raised and especially in the workforce, and we bring this into entrepreneurship is that we have to have our shit together and that we have to look good and in this new age of vulnerability on social media, the way that it's being presented is, hey, guys, I've had a problem. I, I was struggling. I struggled just like you, but I'm good now. <laughs> I'm all and, good. 
forever. Right, we're good now. <laughs> we're good to go. And it's it's lacking that depth because you're like, okay, cool. She struggled. But then when myself, or if you're listening to this, when you are having those moments where you're truly struggling and you're doubting yourself and you have that, that massive fear and imposter syndrome, you're questioning if this is really something that you're going to be able to do, you think that yours is worse that nobody feels just as crazy as you, that nobody melts down like you do. And actually, we're all doing it. And so I've had to remember in my t- my moments where I'm like having a full on meltdown and pity fest and thinking that I'm the worst, I'm the most dramatic, I'm the most incapable that and I lo- I think you say this all the time, Tiffany, like Polly, Polly, the influencer, yes, or Polly, like the that. influencer. Okay, that Polly the influencer is also having the exact same meltdown. And it's kind of hard for my brain to stretch that far to think like, would she really be on the bathroom floor, like freaking out having a meltdown saying this exact same words, but I have to trust that. And as soon as I've leveled that playing field for myself, I don't know if this psychology works for anybody else, but it does for me that I remember they're all feeling the exact same way. We're all doing this, but nobody's actually sharing it. Well, and they're well, we are, you are, I am, there's some people that are, but yes, the general nobody. But what's interesting to me, is you said, it's even a stretch sometimes for you to think that, you know, Polly, the influencer who's making, you know, all this money, and she wears like one like yoga top and get paid, gets paid a hundred thousand dollars for it, while drinking her celery juice. Um, Anyway, (laughs) that it's hard for you to imagine that she has her moments that she's a mess and wants to quit. And I, you know, I'm, I'm doubting myself on the bathroom floor. It's interesting that that's sometimes hard for you to get to because you've worked behind the scenes of people who are, you know, in a, and you know, I'm saying this in a loving kind of sarcastic way, but like you've worked behind the scenes of Polly, the influencers. So you actually know what really happens. Uh-huh. I've been the the one handing the tissue and holding them, holding Polly, so to speak, yeah. and saying like, it's okay. You're doing great. You're right on track. So like, I see that and they're making you guys multiple millions of dollars. And here I am thinking that like, I'm not capable, but yet they're having the meltdowns. And to be quite honest, like I've seen some like scary things that I mean, are much worse than my own meltdowns and tantrums that I have too. But I think the thing too, to call myself out in my own awareness is that when I am having trouble comparing myself to these people, even though I've seen it in person, is that's me wanting to stay stuck. That is me wanting to stay in this and be hopeless and helpless and wanting to be saved and wanting an out to be completely honest. But the longer I do this entrepreneurship and running a business and really this personal growth work, the easier it is for me to remember those things. I can catch myself faster rather than having that pity fest and going down that cycle. I can stop it most times and say like, okay, this is completely normal. Put your big girl panties on. Let's do the thing. You're doing okay. You're right on track. But if I don't, I know that's because I, w- I want to go down that shame spiral as you've said that before as well. Yeah. And I, what I notice is it's like, why would we want to go down a shame spiral? Why would we want to feel that way? Because there is a payoff for any behavior or any cycle we're in that we do repeatedly, there is a payoff. Maybe it's that you don't have to feel uncomfortable showing up. Maybe you don't have to even do all of that work to stretch yourself. I mean, it can be exhausting to go to Mm -hmm. our next level of ourself, all the mindset work, the discipline. It's not even like the everyday tasks necessarily. It's a lot of the weight of the the energy work and constantly, you know, managing our self doubt and all of that stuff that gets really tiring and old. So when the people who are listening who are in that spot, first off, you guys, if you're relating to this episode, and this is really helping you, see behind the scenes and understand like, we're no different than you. You are not alone. In fact, you're right on track. Both of us have said it. If you're not wanting to quit and having meltdowns, in fact, then I'm worried about you because then you're really an ego and that shit's not going to work. That's you're Mm going to end up getting God smacked and good luck with that. You can reach out to me then. Um, 
if you guys are loving this, take a screenshot right now. I want you to share it on social media. Tag me at Project Me with Tiffany. Tag Courtney at, are you at Courtney Baker? I don't even know. I didn't ask you. What's your handle? It's Court Baker. Okay, Court Baker. So C O U R T Baker B A K E R on Instagram and share the episode so we know that you guys are like, okay, we really appreciate you two being so transparent with us. I mean, listen, it's it's not that easy always to be this transparent. You know, it's it's heavy. Um it's not because I want to hide anything from you guys or that Courtney would want to hide anything. It's just, sometimes it's just a lot. And when we are, we're up against it day after day, like, do you guys really want to see that? (laughs) It's like, okay, like one day a week, you can see me in a bad way. But like, if you really saw how it looks sometimes, sometimes it's four days in a row. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would love to be Polly living in Bali. Oh, that rhymed. With her butterflies. Hence why I named her Polly, but go ahead. All right. I get it now. You with your (laughs) words. I love it. I would have never realized that. Um, I would love to be that. But here's the thing. I was that. I was that person that was, oh, it's good now and all success and look how great I am. And, you know, nobody knew that I was in pajamas for five days straight and I hadn't left the house or brushed my hair. Right. And I also worked for those people, by the way. So this is going back a decade, if not more, with the coaches that I worked for. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes, as you you said, and they all felt awful. Their lives were a complete mess behind the scenes. And I didn't want to do that. When I came back into the online space, I said, I'm not living a life like that. You guys, I was, well, all right, I'll start some drama a little bit. But there were coaches that I worked with that we would market, we would do our thing online, team meetings, coach people, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the night, turn around, drink two bottles of wine and smoke a couple joints and be hungovers, crap the next day, the kids were there. And then the next day, do it all over again. Still drunk, maybe a little high, like whatever. And no judgment if you're in that place, because I I did it. I did it for a lot of years. But when I came back online, I said, I don't want to do that. My soul is going to feel like I'm dying inside because I already know what that feels like to fake it. And I had zero fulfillment, zero fulfillment. And so now I'm on this giant mission to share what it looks like all the time. And within reason, because again, yeah, like nobody would want to see me six days in a row, like being super depressed. I mean, I can I can handle that because that's what I see from my clients, right? Just like that's why you have a coach, you guys, is for them to hold space for you to, for them to see all of it. So Mm -hmm. your clients, you know, they come to you and I know you encourage them, like, don't pretend to be okay if you're not with me, right? Because how we can't help anybody in that spot. But you have to have that resource, you guys. So if we're like shifting it now to, okay, what do I do, you know, Tiff and Court, when I'm in this spot or I'm in it now, or I totally get what you're saying about the cycle, what do I do to show up? And, you know, you've heard me say, show up regardless. Like, what do I do to show up regardless when I feel so beaten down, defeated, low, depressed, uninspired, unmotivated, you know, what are, what is it I should do? I mean, the number one thing, and you're going to maybe think it's self-serving, but I don't care because it's the truth. You have to have someone there for that emotional support. So if it is someone that you are blessed enough to have a free mentor, as long as that person is highly qualified and understands, you know, the true dream that you're going after and gets it, then you're really lucky. Um, otherwise you need to hire a coach just like I did five years too late. It was five years too late. I wasted so much time and energy and anguish. I would say that's the number one thing. If someone goes, what would you have done differently? Um, it wasn't like, oh, I would have, you know, tried harder on my own, or I would have, you know, I would have started an email list sooner. Although that's probably number two, I'd be worth (laughs) even more money (laughs) if I started an email list uh, 12 years ago. Yeah, that'd be a pretty solid list by now, you guys. But you know, I wasn't into emails, they bored me, and they still kind of do. (laughs) 
<laughs> yep. Yep. So there I, you I, go. <laughs> I agree with you. Having a coach, obviously, you know, I just love you so much, but I, without being super cheesy, but I can't imagine myself being here. Like, I don't think my business would be afloat right now. Like I would not have the success, the fulfillment, anything without having you as that soundboard of keeping my head together because I mean, I've done a lot of work, but I still can't keep it all together by myself. I don't know anyone who can. So yeah, absolutely. Whether that is in a mentor, like you said, that is, you know, free and just pouring into you have had that, which has been life changing or someone that you're invested in. I had to pay to get that for a very long time. And the other thing I want to say is I had coaches for years and I didn't do a damn thing. Oh, really? I I didn't know this. Mm-hmm. I faked it. I had mentors. I had. I coaches. believe that. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good faker, I, guys. <laughs> I'm really good at faking. Um, I don't do it anymore, but I used to, and I would see results. I can make quick results happen, but it, I could never sustain it. I was that person that was up, down, up, down, up, down, and my mood was up, down. My my finances were up, down. My success, all of it. And it was never sustainable because I wasn't actually doing the work that my coaches were asking me to do, right? I could post the post. I could send that kind of message. But if I wasn't doing the work in the heart space and emotionally to cope with the feelings that I was feeling, I wasn't able to see long-term success, which ultimately ended up in like a whole alcohol and drug-fueled addiction meltdown before I really started to pull it together. So anyway, not that that's most people listening to this, but Having a coach changes everything. That is priority number one because you have to release that pressure. There are times where I don't even want to talk to you. And I show up like, I mean, this was just a month ago. I showed up with a list to a coaching call with like 10 items on it. And Oh, is this when you had all the action items like and you even made like a color coded uh, spreadsheet? I had check I had check boxes. She went and bought like Sharpies, which you know made me happy, but I was so excited to And you use them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't let me do any of the things on that list. You made me talk about my feelings, which was so needed. But I had to be forced to release the pressure on that and just be seen and accepted for who I was. And my own clients, too, they'll say to me, like, if I show you who I really am and all these fears and vulnerabilities and insecurities, then how am I ever going to be a leader? Who's ever going to look at me and trust me and pay me to help them if I'm over here losing my mind? And then I turn around and I look at my clients, the one who said this specifically, and I said, you paid me thousands of dollars to help you. And when you hired me, I was on the bathroom floor losing my mind. Mm. So you bought into a coach who was losing their mind, but could still stand up as a leader and say, I've got you. And if you can buy into that, then other people can buy into you. So just because you have emotions because you're human doesn't disqualify you to be someone who can help other people. And I think that's a giant misconception is that if I'm struggling with something that I can't actually help another person, nobody's going to see me as capable or worthy enough to do it. This is something that I really feel sets you so much apart. And I, I mean, I don't really see, I mean, and I'm sure there's a lot of accounts and people I don't know in this world, but I don't really see anyone doing this where When you coach your clients and through your content on your Instagram at Court Baker, um, you you tell them like I'm in a bad way, like I this, and you don't say like, oh my god, you know I couldn't poop for two days and now I had magnesium drink that I told Tiffany about and now I'm flowing. (laughs) <laughs> like, I mean, beautiful, I might just do that. Like now. the beautiful Nile River. Like, you know, you know, you you share the real stuff. Like you'll oh, say I- like this last week, you know, this last week, I barely got anything done in my business. I mean, you go like deep with it. And you with your private clients, you go even obviously more personal. Why are you not afraid for your own clients and all these potential clients to see when you're a hot mess? Because most people don't want to show that because it's like, well, if I show them a hot mess, why would anyone want to hire me? Mm. I had a mentor that I worked with that showed me when she was a hot mess and that changed my life. And I, for the first time I was like, oh my God, I'm not alone. You're, you're just as crazy as me in the best way possible. Maybe in not all the best ways, but it showed Mm. me that, which gave me that acceptance and love to give myself the permission to show up the way that I am too. And in turn, to help my own clients that come to me and they're like, holy shit, you too? 
And I'm like, yes, me too. Where it's all, this is what it is. And don't get me wrong, when I'm posting on Instagram and there's videos, like I cringe, there's videos of me bawling my eyes out crying on there. And I'm saying, I'm like, I'm sweating now, but I'm like, oh, I'm, get, I'm getting sweaty. I'm freaking out. I'm doing this. I have the vulnerability hangover all the time. It's less and less now, but I'm still scared to post that. It doesn't go away. But the knowledge, knowing that this could save somebody's life, this could help somebody keep going one more day in their business and not to give up that's worth it to me. And I've already been in this coaching industry and left. So I was in it for years and years. And then I, like I said, I had that giant big, you know, drug and alcohol thing. And then I left and came back. When I came back, I was like, everyone's going to know, everyone's going to know she left and she's a failure. And wow, what happened to her? You guys, nobody was here anymore. Nobody was here. Mm. Nobody that I worked with, that I coached, that I worked for, very few of them are still left standing today. And you know what that told me is, Courtney, nobody remembers you from back then, even though now I've told the whole world everything that's happened, which whatever. But anything that happens now, 10 years from now, most of these people are not going to be here. They're not going to remember you even though everything stays online, yada, yada. Like you can't find anything from me from 10 years ago. It's gone. I made sure it was gone. I was like, wait, how did you do that? Because people still find my old like newscaster shit. Uh, oh, like, I got wait. rid of it. Oh, I damn. Covered. I you covered scr- my track. You scrubbed it. I did. But but that gave me permission to get really vulnerable and to say, like, I've already left this. And I know that if I get vulnerable online, like I can leave this if I ever choose to. And life is not going to change for me. The neighbor across the street doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know that I'm this influencer coach person online or that I struggled with these things. Like the world goes on and this world is so giant that you can start a new life and nobody's going to know that you shared that embarrassing thing online. And that just gave me so much more permission to show up the way I wanted to, as scary as it was. Yeah, I love that. And when you said that you had, um, you know, a coach in the past who showed you like the real behind the scenes, not just, you know, not just the glory, you know, but the real story. And I was thinking when you were sharing that, even with, you know, well, he's now in his 70s, but back then my 65 year old, you know, male, white male, you know, doctor, coach who coached, you know, like the CEO of Pfizer, you know, it was like that when there was, there weren't masterminds back then they were called executive retreats. And I was the only female, there were spreadsheets. It was like, there was no like giant container of like balls that you jumped into and took a picture for Instagram. Like there was none of it. Um, but that's still fun. But there was none of that. There was no silent disco. It was like hard up, more serious strategy. But that's okay. That's what I needed at the time. But now that you shared that story, I remember when I had someone um, send me a letter, I I don't think I should go into details. But basically, I was going to get sued. And I was tripping balls. I mean, imagine you guys and I'm sure some of you listening have been sued. I know I have a lot of lawyers that listen. So you can laugh at this. But I was I was like, holy shit, I'm getting sued. This is going to take me down. I'm going to have to file bankruptcy. I'm going to go, I'm going to end up in jail. (laughs) I I was like, (laughs) went went deep with it. And thank God I had, you know, already hired him and built a relationship. I called him, I mean, in hysterics. Like I was like texting like 911, you know, like this is, this is crazy. He was so calm and he goes, congratulations. And I'm like, what? I go, I don't understand. He goes, when you reach seven figures and beyond, if you don't have at least, you know, a lawsuit once in a while, he's like, you're not really going in. He's worth a hundred million. He has about six lawsuits going at a time. Think about celebrities. They have lawsuits going all the time. All the big brands, Coca-Cola, think about that. And I, and he's like, he goes, yeah, it's not fun, but it's it's going to end up being a line item, like a lost line item in your business. This is a fucking business, right? Yep. It's yep. a business. There's things that happen. They're going, someone can sue you just because they feel like it. You know, things happen. So I'm glad you shared that because when he told me that, which I didn't know, I didn't know. And it never crossed my mind even to think like, oh, yeah, like all these companies, you know, everyone has lawsuits, right? 
And I went, oh my God, it made me feel so much better. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that. Yeah. Even, even on the scale of a beginner entrepreneur in this online space, the first time I got a hater, like a straight up, like you shouldn't be coaching, you're a horrible person, yada, yada, and blasting me online. At first, second, I was like, oh, do I really suck? And then I, I was like, oh, you got one, Courtney, you did it. And that was a check mark. Like that was like, you're on your way, kid. You're on your way because nobody that has success or the the things, the goals that you want hasn't gotten there without having those issues, right? I'm not at the multi seven figure point with a lawsuit, but I have gotten those haters. And rather than it taking me down or, you know, a client who quits or whatever those standard speed bumps are, I'm like, checkbox and on to the next. That was all part of it. Like it has to happen. You have to struggle. Although so many people would be like, it doesn't have to be a struggle. So I don't know. I might've just lost a bunch of No, I mean, I, listen, you know how almost every episode I get DMs or people actually take the time to go to my website and like fill out the form that I swear and talk about God. Now, when that first started happening, I mean, I, people are, I'm sorry, you got, well, first off, why are you listening to me if you don't like it? Second off, you want to start calling me a Jew? Well, since when is being a Jew a bad thing? And that's the latest thing I'm getting is you're wow. a Jew. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I'd love to be a Jew. Like, what is good? I'm like, this is crazy. Cool. And, but I mean, I can laugh about it now. But when that first happened, yeah. I felt like, God, maybe I'm being too bold. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm like sharing too much or being too much of myself. And I was like, maybe I need to like tone it down. And I will say after like that first started happening, I did start trying to tone down my episodes. But then you know what happened? Then I wasn't getting excited. First off, my downloads went way down. My yep. subscribers went way down. And then I wasn't as excited to come on and do this for you guys and pay all the prices and all the costs that come along with doing a podcast, it started not to be fun anymore. Cause I was like, you know, trying to basically be fake. Like I was trying to put a, a lid on myself, which that doesn't work. Ah, I love this. Okay. So where this links, what you just said was that you were like basically stifling yourself, trapping yourself. And therefore it was, it was harder for your, for your, I'm sure your downloads or your podcast episodes or listeners and that's the same as showing up online, right? And so when we're struggling online, we're struggling emotionally behind the scenes, right? The hot mess moments or the meltdowns, as I like to call them. When you're struggling with that and you're not giving yourself permission to show up exactly how you are, it's near impossible to show up online, right? And therefore, you just don't do it. And then that's when it's like, oh, I took a social media detox, guys, but I'm back. I struggled, but I'm good now right? Like it's all of that bullshit that happens. But what if you were to actually own that things weren't always super great or even today, like, Hey, I'm having a rough day, but this is what's going on for me. And you just own it. That gives you the freedom to show up exactly who you are, which makes it all a hell of a lot easier, even if you are struggling. Well, let me so, ask you this though. When, when there are so many Polly, the influencers out, out there, um, that aren't showing this side that are making a crap ton of money and are, you know, speaking on these big stages and getting sponsorship deals and all these things. And they're not showing this stuff. So then there's a lot of people that go, well, doing it their way seems to really work. So shouldn't I not show all that stuff? Cause they're, they're not showing it. You just ask the question that's going to get me all riled up. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, here we go. I'll try to contain it as much as possible. Look, that's real. That's real. They're making bank. They're living the dream. But I'm going to tell you guys behind the scenes, it's not so peachy and happy. It, it's not. Like there are moments of it, absolutely. But it's, oh, what's the word? The word that's coming to me is hollow. Th there is no fulfillment. There's, there is none of that. And when you're at that level and you're not showing that vulnerability and having that emotional connection with your clients, with your audience, your community, there is a level of depth that is missing. And so those coaches that aren't showing that are constantly searching for more. 
They're searching for more success, more money, more people, more anything to fill that because it's an empty, giant, gaping hole inside. I'm more fulfilled making less money, working with less people, having less fame because I have stepped away from being like one of the top, top people because I'm emotionally connecting with people. And so if you want to be that coach online who doesn't show what it looks like and you want to be that person who says like, hey, like I struggle too, just like you, but, you know, go crush your day. Hashtag good, <laughs> good vibes. Like whatever. <laughs> If you want to be that kind of person online, like go for it. You will reach success. It's the same thing like we said at the beginning of the episode. Time will give it to you eventually. If you are consistent, you show up like that. It will happen. Absolutely. That's a real thing. But I'm telling you, you're going to feel nothing Mm. because I've done it myself. I've been that person and I've worked for them. I've been their best friend and I know what it's like and no judgment on it because everybody's on their own path. But here's the other thing that I know too, getting into my more spiritual side is that those coaches, those influencers, those leaders, they're on their own journey and the uh, two by four or God or whoever you want to believe in will come for them and they will be knocked down on their asses too, because this cannot fulfill them forever. And we as humans cannot live life being unfulfilled. We will destroy it. And so anybody that you see that is doing that, that is living the dream, it's coming for them eventually. But I know that I'm going to be in my own little lane over here telling the truth, showing what it looks like, having fulfillment and having it sustain me that this business is never going to fail because I know that I am being open, being honest and having that connection. And I am completely fulfilled with it. So there's no need to self-sabotage. Oh, I love this. And you guys keep showing up and show up as you. And I know like, just because you listen to this, it's not like all of a sudden I'm going to show up as me every day. But as long as you're staying in your lane, like Courtney said, and you are doing to the best of your ability to be the most of integrity and be the most open that you can with your people and being of service, and then you add consistency to it, that's going to create a long standing business. You know, that's, that's the reason why I'm here 12 years later, people ask, where the hell did you come from in the on, you know, online coaching space? You know, you've only been here a year and a half, and you blew up. Well, number one, I have a broadcasting background. I'm a professional communicator. I know how to communicate. Number two, my other company is in digital marketing. So there's a leg, you know, we all have a leg up. There's a leg up there. And the third thing is, is I refuse to do it how I did before. Thank God I didn't start Project Me with Tiffany Carter any sooner than I did because we would have had to have deleted all that shit. On Instagram, on Facebook, I would have been Polly the influencer and a major fraud. I mean, that's why when I like say Polly the influencer, I do say it with compassion and love and and sarcasm too. But I would have been that person. I mean, Mm -hmm. I would have like, I would have rented a private jet and had a photo shoot on it. Okay, I would have gone deep with that shit. And then I would have been horrified. After I was like, God smacked to my knees, I would have been horrified trying to like, delete all that shit at some point, and it probably couldn't be deleted. So thank God I didn't do that. <laughs> I love it. I would have I would have been with you too. Um, earlier, you asked, I want to touch on this a little bit too, of more of the tangible things of what to do when you are feeling this way. So we were talking about, you know, having a coach and the importance of that. And that's absolute number one, for sure, someone to release that pressure. But when I'm in that stage, I, I try my best to show up online, right? And so we're talking about being vulnerable, being honest, I'll show as much as I can. Do I think you need to show all of it? No, like there's some stuff that the internet does not know about me that maybe someday I'll share, but I'm not ready yet. But I can share to some extent what's going on. People connect with emotion, not with facts, not with the story, right? So if you share, I'm feeling this emotion, this is how I am experiencing life at the moment, then that's what they'll connect with. They don't need to know my sister did this and my mom is blah, 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 and I hate my job. And like, if you don't want to share that stuff, you don't have to, but you can share how you're feeling. So I do that to what I'm capable of, to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm a little scared, right? 
that that vulnerability hangover feeling. And I reach that edge and I'm like, okay, I shared a little bit. I got on video. I talked about it. The next thing that I'll do are like, this is the more marketing strategy side of things is the stuff that will still move the needle, but I don't have to show my face. Cause there are, there are days where I'm like, no, no, nobody's seeing this. This is for me and me only. Um, I do audience growth and I do content. So I think one of the most underrated things that you can do if you're trying to sell your service or your product online, especially Instagram is audience growth and nobody likes to do it. But you guys, if you're on, I mean, say you never got off the bathroom floor since that seems to be the theme, but if you're on the couch in bed, balling your eyes out, doing whatever, you can mindlessly numb out and follow people like maybe comment if you can put some words together and grow your audience without showing your face. That is always my default. And growing your audience, you guys, by the time you are feeling better again and you are launching and showing up like Polly, you know, in a good way, then you actually will have people to sell to. So that's my number one go-to is audience growth. I always default back to that. Okay, what will move the needle? More people, more eyes to buy the thing. So if I'm not selling right now, they'll be ready to buy from me by the time I am feeling good and ready to sell. Mm, I love that because that's really... That's realistic because so so many people be like, I just, I don't feel like doing a video. I, you know, and you'll tell yourself, oh, you know, I'm having a writer's block. I don't know what to write, which is just all forms of, you know, fear and disguise. But what block would you have around following, liking, and maybe commenting on potential ideal clients, uh, you know, pages and growing your audience? I mean, there really isn't one, is there? unless you're choosing to stay stuck. Right. Right. And, and if you are like, okay, give yourself compassion for that moment. Maybe that day you're just like, I, I, I'm out, I'm out today, but tomorrow I will do it. Fine. Let that be. But if you're choosing not to, it's not because you're not worthy. Like that's just an action, right? That's just as much as, I don't know why I'm saying this, but like cleaning the bathroom, washing the toilets, like it's mindless and you just do it. So that's one thing that you can be doing. The other thing is content and if you're not going to write these long, emotional, vulnerable posts, which by the way, if you're feeling emotional and vulnerable, that's the best time to write because it's going to come from the heart space. But if you're not wanting to tap into that, you can at least go on the educational content type of posts. Here's how to achieve this three steps to blah, blah, blah. And there doesn't have to be that emotional depth to it. And it's not that hard. So the two things are educational content and audience growth. And that's all I'll do all day. You know what? I'll add to that. I also do um, humorous content. So Ooh. stuff that make, well, you just did a post that was really funny. I did actually. Yeah. So like go and look at like different gifts or things like that, whether you're, you know, you're a massage therapist, hairstylist, you're a coach, you're an accountant, attorney, whatever it is. There's like inside industry jokes or things that are funny. And that'll actually put you in a better mood, even looking at those, even if I don't post them. I'll go through like that free app. If you don't use it, it's really good. Giphy, G-I-P-H-Y. Um, I'll go through there and save. <laughs> Are you writing it down? <laughs> I didn't know this. Thank You're you. going to be obsessed. And I'll go through there and I will like put in, you can put in different sh- uh, search terms. So I've even put in like influencer or date night or, or introvert or something like that. And the funniest shit comes up and I save them for the future. But yes. just by doing like that kind of content that makes me laugh, it like helps my mood a little bit. And at least I'm doing something. So now you guys can't say, oh, I didn't, I couldn't do anything all week because I was stuck and I was a mess. Like now that's a choice because she just told you what you guys could do. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> and here is what I want to challenge you to do. This is another thing I'd like to add to this list and feel free you guys to add suggestions of your own. I love this list. This is so good. Like Let's build on a list of like what to do when you're a hot mess. <laughs> like uh, the other thing you can do, I mean, it, it does require putting words together and being more vulnerable, but like, why don't you DM Courtney or DM me and like reach out and just say like, Hey, I've been listening to your podcast or I listened to this episode and it really, you know, really resonated to me. And I just want to say thank you. You don't even have to ask a question. But just reach out and it's at Court Baker, C-O-U-R-T-B-A-K-E-R at Project Me with Tiffany. Also, 
Here's another thing you can do when you're a hot mess. Be of service to others and support other entrepreneurs. So take a damn screenshot of this episode, share it in Instagram, tag Courtney and myself, you know, or if you see a quote that really like uplifted you, share the quote and tag somebody. And that doesn't take much effort. And it's uplifting, right? You're, you're sharing other people's work or other things that made you feel good. You're supporting other online entrepreneurs. You know, that's another thing you can do. But I would challenge you guys to truly reach out if you're in the middle of if you're in the middle of it and you're you're in that loop and you're feeling stuck, why not just DM us? Say, you know, DM Courtney and be like, I heard you on Tiffany's show and I just want to say thank you. You don't even have to give your whole story or you can. I can vouch for mm-hmm. her that she will reply. She will not ghost your ass. Mm-hmm. And you guys listening to this, this actually helps us right? It it helps us, at least for me, to be of service and to connect. Because like I said, I do forget that everybody else struggles too. And when I have a client or, you know, a past client or just anybody randomly getting up in my DMs and saying, I'm really struggling with this, it reminds me of the work too. And when I can have compassion for other people, I can start having compassion for myself. So know that it's actually a gift for us to receive those messages and you're doing more to help us out too than us just helping you. Like it's all, it's all part of this, right? That's where this fulfillment comes into place. And especially if you are in coaching, like I'm in coaching, that's where I have fulfillment is to help us all feel better. I love that. So people can understand um, really clearly who it is you coach, because there's a lot of people who will say, oh, I'm too early in my business or in pursuing my dreams for someone like you, Tiffany, or someone like you, Courtney. So who is it that you coach and who don't you coach just so people are super clear? I don't honestly think that there's anybody that I don't coach because my years of being the business manager working for six and seven figure entrepreneurs, it's mostly on expanding teams and running massive giant launches. So there's that side of things. But the bulk of my clients are newbie beginners that don't even know if they want to be a coach or they do, but they don't know what it would look like or have no following online. Maybe it's a private Instagram account, like clueless and being able to bring them up to a place where they are making money off of that and coaching their own clients like that can actually happen for you. That is not out of reach. So here's the thing. If you're telling yourself that, like, I'm not ready for it is, well, what do you assume ready is? What, what level do you think you need to be at before you work with a coach? Because the, the way that you become ready is by hiring a coach, investing in that and learning those skills in order to figure out what it is that you want to do and how I, to scale I that. I think there's a lot of people, especially you know, newbies or people who are beginners or people who are doing full career shifts, you know, or big or big pivots, if they're not crystal clear on what it is they want to do and who it is they want to help, I think those are the people who are like, God, I really haven't figured it out myself yet. So that'd be like, kind of, you know, it'd kind of be way too early for me to hire someone like you. So is that a lie they're telling themselves? I mean, totally, I couldn't figure it out myself. Like, I still can't figure it out myself. And I'm a business strategist. Like, when I'm working with you, even, it's because I can't handle it all in my own head. Like, I'm not capable of sorting out all of these thoughts. And so no matter what, I have to have somebody to bounce the ideas through in order to get the clarity. Mm, I love that. So you guys, now you know who it is she helps, who she coaches. You can take that lie out of your head and go hit her up in the DMs on Instagram at court, C-O-U-R-T, Baker, B-A-K-E-R, and take a screenshot, share this episode. If you know someone else who's in the early stages who's or someone who's wanting to get out of corporate America or do a big shift and they're doubting themselves or they're starting to compare themselves to other people that they're seeing online, send them this episode You just got a full transparent, I mean, it's a snippet because obviously we'd have to have like a reality show, which would be really fucking (laughs) boring of Courtney and I, trust me. It's like two introverts. That's the reality show. Two introverts. I mean, I think it would be entertaining. (laughs) I mean, you're right. Other introverts and like empaths would probably be really entertained. I mean, I think I can be kind of entertaining, but I mean, 
it would be really funny. But you just got a snippet of what it truly, honestly looks like behind the scenes. And I really hope that gave you guys a little bit of a boost. Like, okay, like they just gave the real deal. It is not all, it really isn't all Bali and butterflies and it's not supposed to be, and it's not going to be. What, mm-hmm. any final words from you? I think the biggest message is, you know, you're not alone. You're in good company. We're just the same as you. We've just been doing it longer and you're completely capable of doing this, right? And now you've got those actionable steps of what to actually do when you are having those moments. Like reach out to one of us. We've got your back with that. But then you also have the things that you can do to get out of the state that you're in, right? You can still see progress even if you're not showing up online. So just keep going. Just don't stop. There you go, guys. Keep going regardless. All right. Love you all. I will see you in the DMs. And thanks so much, Courtney, for being you and being one of my favorite clients. Oh, thank you. I just love you so much. Love you. Bye, hon. Bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.